Let's see how each approaches our problem. The frequentist begins by setting up what's called a hypothesis test. He starts with the null hypothesis, H0, which states that P equals 0.5, meaning the coin is perfectly fair. The alternative hypothesis, H1, suggests that P does not equal 0.5, indicating the coin is biased in some direction. His next step is to calculate the P value, which answers this crucial question. What's the probability of seeing seven or more heads if the coin really is fair? Now, this is where the p-value concept becomes really important to understand correctly. The p-value isn't the probability that the coin is fair given our data, even though that's what most people think it means. Instead, it's the probability of getting data at least as extreme as what we observed, assuming the coin is actually fair. When the frequentist calculates this using the binomial distribution, he finds that if you flip the fair coin 10 times, you'd expect to see 7 or more heads about 17% of the time. That's his p-value, 0.17. Since this p-value of 0.17 is greater than the conventional threshold of 0.05, he concludes that there isn't strong evidence against the null hypothesis. In other words, he cannot reject the idea that the coin is fair. The frequentist also constructs what's called a confidence interval. After doing the mathematics, he determines that the 95% confidence interval runs from about 0.35 to 0.93. The frequentist is very careful about how he interprets this interval. He's not saying there's a 95% chance that the true probability lies in this range, because in his worldview, the true probability is fixed. Instead, He's saying that if we were to repeat the data gathering and interval building process many times, then about 95% of those intervals would succeed in capturing the true fixed probability.